This is an introduction to exercise 4i on perpendicular and parallel lines, page 268 of your textbook. Once I go through this do now question, if you'd like to go back and make sure you're up to date with the other exercises, you can do that. For our do now question, it's from exercise 4g. It's find the equation of the line which has a gradient of 5 and passes through the point 5, negative 1. It's already given us a bit of information that we can easily put into the equation. Remember that y equals mx plus c, that's always going to be really important for this chapter. So we're replacing m with 5 because the gradient is 5. And we end up with y equals to 5x plus c. Once we've done that, we just need the other bit of information to find c itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute 5, negative 1. I'm going to identify, and you don't have to write this step out, this is just to explain it. Identify that that's x and that's y. The 5 is the x and the one, negative 1 is the y. I'm going to rewrite this equation right here with those numbers. So that becomes y, which is negative 1, equals to 5 times 5, because x is 5, plus c which I know is negative 1 equals a 25 plus C. And so if I subtract 25 on both sides, I get negative 26. A lot of students stop there. Why is that incorrect? Or rather, why would that not get full marks? Thank you very much. The question is find the equation, not find the value of C. So finally, you would write Y equals to 5X minus 26. If you write plus negative 26, inherently wrong with that uh, but of course it is preferred that you do this have we gone through what this means those three dots does anyone know what those three dots mean mathematicians are sometimes lazy uh, we write those three dots to mean therefore so blah 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 all this work therefore that's the equation right that's just a mathematical thing you will never be assessed in that it's just something that you can do to make it a little bit easier to read your work all right, once you understand that, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, get started on exercise 4H questions or follow along while I go through 4I questions, 4I content, sorry. Lovely. Okay, so for 4I, we're looking at parallel and perpendicular. They're two key concepts that are very important with, with linear relations. The first one is parallel. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, no pun intended there. But your parallel, of course, refers to anything that has the same gradient. So if you think of your railway tracks, right, of course, the railway tracks have to have the same gradient. Otherwise, your train will fall off the railway. Okay, so same gradient is relevant for your parallel. If you're following along, please make sure you write parallel, same gradient. Perpendicular lines are a little bit different. They're essentially the opposite of your parallel lines. You work hard. If two perpendicular lines meet, essentially they have a 90 degree. So if you look on the example on the right hand side, the green and the blue lines are parallel. They have the same gradient. Now you can see the equations are different. Y equals 2x plus 1 and there's y equals 2x minus 2. They have the same gradient. The number in front of the x is the same. But your constant, your plus 1, your minus 2 is different, which means that they're just they're in different positions but the gradients are the same. So they're kind of like your railroad tracks. However, either the blue and the red, or you can also say the green and the red, they're perpendicular. The angle that's formed between the red and any of the other lines is 90 degrees. So we're defining a perpendicular line as having a 90 degree angle when they meet. Right? So for example, if I was to do a line like this, that would be not perpendicular, not parallel to any of the lines pre-existing. There's really only one extra step, which makes this a little bit trickier. We're going to start with parallel, and then we'll do perpendicular. We'll start with parallel. Find the equation of the line, which is parallel to y equals 3x minus 1. Now, just like before, that constant doesn't matter. We just worry about the gradient. And if it's parallel, it means the gradient is the same. So the first thing I'm going to do is write m equals 3. And you'll notice this is actually very similar to our do now question now. I start with y equals mx plus c. And of course, reminding myself that I can replace the m with 3 now. So that becomes y equals to 3x plus c. 
question then says the pass is three zero four. I substitute my point in just like before. Sub zero four. I know that the x is zero and the y is four. I'm not going to write that step this time. I then substitute it. I get four equals three times zero plus c. Just to bring up another common mistake students make. A lot of students accidentally switch these around just because zero comes first. They write zero for y. Just make sure you write x and y appropriately. That means 4 equals to c. And just like before, I'm writing the equation, not finding the value of c. So I rewrite the whole thing. And I get, therefore, y equals to 3x plus 4. I'm going to start using that therefore sign a lot more now. Just give me a heads up. So that's pretty much identical to what we did before. The only additional step was to say that it's parallel, so the grain's the same. That's the only additional step. Are there any questions about that one for those of us following along? Seems pretty similar. Lovely. Perpendicular is when it gets a little bit trickier, but generally speaking, it's the same. Find the equation of the line that is perpendicular to the line y equals to 2x minus 3 and passes through 0, negative 1. I'm going to refer back to this formula right here. Now, there are two formulas. I'm going to get you to just copy down the 1. Can I get you to copy down that one there for perpendicular lines? m1 times m2 equals negative 1. Really all they're saying is that those gradients are the opposite. If you multiply one of the gradients by the other one, you get negative 1. They're opposite gradients. There is a very easy way to do this, but this is the formula. I'm going to show you the easy way of doing it. Essentially, what that formula tells us is that the gradient for a perpendicular, and it's going to sound very complicated, but I promise it's very easy, is the negative reciprocal. Now, negative, we know what negative means. Reciprocal just means we flip it on its head, like a fraction. Yeah. So, for example, if our original gradient, and you don't need to write this down, but let's say our original gradient, and we typically call it m1 for the first gradient, if my m1 equals to 2, Actually, you know what? Let's make this a bit easier. Let's go, let's say, is 2 over 3, once that loads. My m1 is 2 over 3. I do the negative reciprocal. So I chuck a negative in the front, and I flip it upside down. So m equals to 2 over 3, which hopefully this will load sometime soon. There we go. Let's say m equals 2 over 3. Our m2 will equal to the negative of the reciprocal. If, for example, I have m1 equals to negative 2, I chuck a negative in the front. Well, two negatives makes it positive, so I don't need to write negative at all. Now, 2, I flip it, becomes 1 over 2. It's just the negative reciprocal, or the negative and then flip the fraction. Because I know that 2 is the same as writing 2 over 1. So I flip that and it becomes 1 over 2. That's it. So in this example, it says that the gradient is 2. So the perpendicular gradient, let's do it. I'm going to cross this out because that's not relevant to this question. I'm going to ignore that for now. If my m1 equals to 2, my m2 equals the negative reciprocal. So the negative, and we flip it upside down. m2 equals the negative a half. And then it's exactly the same. So I'm going to put that into my equation. I get y equals the negative a half x plus c. Because I'm replacing m with that negative a half. It's passing through 0, negative 1. A lot of students accidentally use the y equals 2x minus 3. And write y equals 2x plus c and substitute that point in. That's not going to be, give you the same thing. We need to substitute the point into this new equation. So I write sub 0, negative 1. And I get negative 1 equals to negative half 0 plus c. c equals to negative 1. Again, we can't stop there. We were looking for the equation, not the value of c. So we get y equals negative half 
x minus 1. Are there any questions about that for those of us following along with this exercise? Okay.